For the LA. Deploying flashbang. Deploying flashbang. Defusing. Counter Fire. 
going here step Village Scooping Two, three, three, one low. Above you. I make a one. Out. Oh, Affirmative. Laying down smoke. Oh fuck, my aim. Ren, Ren. Nembak apa lu anjing?
down smoke, flashbang. Troy flashbang. Throwing a grenade. Sí, 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 Bro, es ahí. Sí, 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 sí. Yeah. 
forward. I'm throwing a flashback. Smoke. Throwing a flashback. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah. Oh my god. I'm throwing a flashbang. Top of mid, top of mid. Get the bomb. Last one, cat. Oh, my camera, my camera, my camera. Bacat lo aja mati duluan anjing Gak guna Alah udah main dari tadi ini game pertama gua su Masih aja Lo pikir gua lama ma, apa lama nggak main I'm throwing smoke. I am planting the bomb. Bomb has been planted. Grenade.
it up, fuck it.
What else are they going to combine this with? It's going to be Razor. Alright, nice. Razor with Bounty Hunter means that they're going to have some nicer lanes. In general, the Bounty Hunter is good at laning, not the best at getting kills. It actually... All right, thanks, Andagu. Uh, actually, these two work really nicely because they allow themselves to get a strong mid-game, mid which they can take a lot of advantage from, because the track kills obviously give the Razor the gold necessary to snowball out of control. Appreciate that, um, Andagu. Really appreciate those comments. So, Execration, that way, is able to get a solid mid-game from a nice laning phase, which usually translates easily because the Razor has this mix of physical, magical damage. Hard to itemize against a Razor once it gets to minute 15 or so. And that level 10 talent of the 15 agility is insane on him, so he peaks really, really hard around minute 15 and then starts falling off a bit, which is why the track gold is so very important. The only issue here with the Razor is that if you do decide to run it mid, you lose a lot of possibilities that go well with Bounty Hunter. You have seen a lot of players, especially in SCA, pick Tinker or pick, for example, an Invoker to t make advantage or take advantage of the vision. We saw how disgusting the Bounty Hunter is with Tinker. It's just tracked and all of a sudden, oh, heat sticky missiles. Oh, no, more heat sticky. Oh, holy shit. Okay, I'm dying. Because there's just so, it's so hard to beat that without any sort of spelling on your team, which is why Execration. You know, the Razor is a nice pick here that doesn't really reveal what your mid hero is going to be, as he can always be played as a carry, or even an offensive trilin, which works nicely with his bounty hunter, and you open up your possibilities a lot. Harder to counter a hero when you don't really know, when you don't actually know what, you know, what's what's going to happen here. So, uh, what's going to be the laning stage? So, Boom ID now need to ban a fifth ban. I wonder what they're going to go for. They ban the Doom, which indicates a possibility of a Storm, Queen of Pain, those kind of heroes. In general, mm, I wonder if that's going to be the choice for Boom ID, because you could ban like it's like here's large stuns. They go for the deuce instead, so they're just banning safe bans. They know Execration wants to wants to go for the Storm and the Queen of Pain are okay, especially to deal with the Razor. The any hero with mobility in general, Doom and Razor is a nice combination as well. So I kind of like that actually. Execration, banning the Weaver after seeing the Doom ban. I would actually ban the Storm as well. Or, ooh, the PL. That's an interesting... That's a good ban, actually, on, on second thought. Because that allows you to concentrate your draft much more into single target and not be so fussed about being countered by a potential PL. The Terror Blade can counter single target draft to some degree, but Razor and Bounty Hunter both deal well with the Terror Blade in the early game, and they both have enough pushing power to actually uh, mitigate some of Terror Blade's you know, space creation. So, boom, ID now. We need a third pick, and probably the offlaner to start off with. Perhaps they carry already. For the offlaners, Omnet would have been really nice for them, even if he does fail against the Razor. He could still go for the Bat Rider, but Bat Rider is a bit weak against the Razor and Bounty Hunter if hit by the track. But Bat Rider is, in general, a pretty good uh, synergistic pickup for the Tusk Disruptor combination, right? So you have the Disruptor, Glimpse Back, Tusk Ice Shards or Snowballs or whatever it is, Batter runs overhead, Fireflies the whole area. Pretty nice. And th there it is. Woo! Uh, my analysis is still on point. So it actually is a really nice synergistic pick. Razor's kind of annoying with a Purge, but you should still be able to counter him with a Force Staff. And the Bounty Hunter track, yes, it's kind of annoying, but Bat Rider is one of the heroes that can actually get Lotus Orb and not be too fussed about that. BKB as well, meaning he can dispel track in many situations. Now, what's the choice for Execration? After seeing this Bat Rider pickup, you probably want to go for your support, right? Your position 5 It's the easiest thing. You have the option of a Nixus. Oh, no, you don't. Uh, what options do you have against a Bat Rider? The Shadow Shaman or the Rubik come to mind? Ooh, Witch, Witch Doctor. Interesting. So Shadow Shaman and Rubik, I kind of like better this situation, being more defensive supports. But Witch Doctor offers something that those two supports don't, and it's mainly the harassment lane. With a pretty long range of around 550 and 61 base attack damage, Witch Doctor is one of the highest base attack damage supports and one of the best harassers. I think it's 58, actually. Sorry if I got that wrong. But uh, that plus the Maledict ensures that you can get kills with a hero like Bounty Hunter who doesn't bring much to the table in early engagements. And Witch Doctor plus Razor is absolutely fantastic, in addition to giving you some nice some nice team fight. Now, Shadow Fiend is the choice for Boom ID. Hmm. Offering both magical and physical damage, similar to before. Not too countered by that Razor. I like it. He has a raise for the Razor, which, you know, even if, if you're just making puns, that's pretty impressive. So let's see if, <laughs> if the Shadow Fiend is, is the choice here, because... I mean, you can still get stopped from your Requiem with a Paralyzing Cask, a bit annoying, and Razor can still annoy you a bit in the lane, but the magical damage you provide and the fact that you can last it with it, in addition to how good Shadow Fiend is with Tusk, I very much like this pick. You might want to run something different in the mid lane that doesn't get so countered by Shadow Fiend. 
I really like the Tinker. There it is. Tinker. I mentioned the Tinker earlier, but I particularly love the Tinker because he combines... I mean, I already said it earlier, right? He was really good with Bounty Hunter. Actually works nicely with Witch Doctor because he gives him a lot of space for the March of the Machine so he can use his Death Ward efficiently. Uh, the Heat Seeking Missile is particularly good with Death Ward as well to just snipe out targets. Has a peak that's around minute 20, 25. That's where usually Tinker's peak when he gets all his items, the Blink Dagger and all that, which is similar to Razor. So Razor peaks at 15, more or less, assuming it's a normal game. And then Tinker peaks at 20. So you have a nice little curve there for your heroes. And you also offer a lot of lane domination. And in the off chance that you don't do too well in the early game, you have some space creation with the Tinker, with the March of the Machines, playing defensively, allowing you to play that way. Because Tinker should be able to win his lane anyway. So... That's actually quite nice. I, I like the Tinker pick a lot. And, oh, sorry. Sorry for the logo. I completely forgot about the RRQ logo. E, that, earlier, I was watching Open Qualifiers in this. I had to put the little logo just in case. Anyway, Execration with the last ban here. They ban a Life Stealer. Actually, I do like the Life Stealer. Razor in the aggressive position or something like that. You know what I actually kind of like for Execration? I think something along the lines of Beastmaster would be quite nice. Beastmaster is good against Shadow Fiend. Can't stop the Bat Rider. Brings the slow to the table. Works nicely with Tinker as well because the Hawk, obviously. He's not as powerful as before, but still pretty good. I don't see many issues with the Beastmaster. He's a strong laner as well. Can actually be uh, used in a dual offlane with Bounty Hunter and Witch Doctor. Both pretty strong. And even the Band of the... The Band of the Vengeful Spirit also seems like that as well. So it seems like you might want to go for the Beast. Nope, Void. void. Interesting choice. Actually, I like the Void of it better. Combines really well. I, 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 my, my bad for not seeing that because March of the Machines, Death Ward, the Razor as a whole, Void is really strong with these heroes. And he peaks a bit later as well, so you continue the curve. And you can run either Void or Razor in an offensive tri lane decently. So that's not bad. But my D not either carry though. Seeing the Void, you want to go for... I mean, you could go for the Morphling, but actually, no, we can't Morph anymore while he's stunned. Sorry, that's an old thing. What carry would you run? Hmm, you want to carry with Mobility that can counter the Tinker to some degree. And the Void. So, Mobility and Tanky. Ooh, that's hard. Weaver would have been really good. Vengeful Spray would have been really good. Maybe Juggernaut with a Blink Dagger. Juggernaut's kind of okay against the Faces Void. A Monkey King, perhaps, as well. Yeah, Monkey there's a Monkey King. Right, I'm, I'm not that bad in the predictions. I am quite happy by myself <laughs> usually i don't predict this well so what one two three predictions yeah i'll take that all right the monkey king here is a pretty good pickup because in the off chance the faces void so the faces void is run as a uh, aggressive carry or something of the sort monkey king can counter him razor does destroy him which is unfortunate but monkey king at least uh, ensures some of your lanes are going to go kind of well he can deal with the tinker decently even if the laser is very annoying, he's gonna be forced. Someone is gonna be forced to go for Lotus Orb or for a BKB, of course. And uh, what else? I mean, he does offer a stun to stop the Tinker from from TPing away. So there's that. Uh, he's offer. He's good synergistically with your team. You know, has the little setup. Went to the Wrecking of Souls. You combine it with a Lasso as well. Easy quick kill. Glimpse is very very strong with a Monkey King. I like it. It's not too amazing, but it's decent. Uh, like, eh. I, th I think it just kind of works well in all situations. And after seeing Execration's draft, you're more on the defensive in terms of your draft. You're not looking for synergy. You're looking to not be destroyed as Boom ID. Especially because you're probably the wor worst team. I don't like saying that, but they are the l the team that it you expect to do worse in this lineup. So going for safer options is always a nice choice. Especially in the SEA region where we do have people not, <laughs> not having the time of their lives, depending on the draft. By the way, guys, if you have any technical issues, I would ask that you tell me, by the way. I'm using a new microphone, seeing how this works, because my old microphone was, eh, a bit busted. Hopefully, you can hear my beautiful, honey-like, milky voice as well as possible. And before we get into the game and present the teams, I will just say one thing. I do understand there's another English casting of this going on. I started first, and I did not know that they were casting. They started a bit later. So, you'll be moving on after this best of three into something else that's hopefully not casted, because I don't mean to take away anyone's jobs. And I do apologize to Luminous and Basket for doing that. But you will have those two options, and I guess competition is sometimes good. I'm not making any money out of this anyway, so I guess that is fair to say. And um, we will just continue casting as much as I can. Whatever games get uncasted, just tell me, and I will go and move on to that. Not too fussed about what region. No, most every region except for the NA scene pretty well. And even NA from my casting in BTSS, I know decently, so... We're just going to be moving around. My name is D-Swordfish. I'll be your caster for today. The, the beautiful um, emergency caster is just desperately trying to find some games to practice with. 
All right. With that said, let's pretend the team's real quick, but not after we see Nando die, because Nando, ooh, difficult position for you, buddy. There's a snowball with five people. Blood given max souls right from the start, since, as mentioned, this mid lane is not going to be easy for him. So now, seeing the lane, they're going to put the Batrider up top and give Monkey King the 1v1 against the melee. No. Okay. Definitely seems like a nice option. Nando really wants this bounty rune. He's gonna get it, in fact. They have glimpse, so. All right. I guess uh, Shadow Fiend's gonna just peace out. Very patiently waiting on that time walk, but it works out. Uh, look, raging potato, going for the courier. Wants tag, it, but <laughs> he wants the courier, but he's not gonna find it. Shadow Fiend's nice not block. buying oh, that cell. Overblock. That's fine. It's getting CS. Nope. No. No. Alright, well that's... One. Go yeah, over block. <laughs> Nando, alright, already swapping lanes. Execration do not want to deal with this, it looks like. Just gonna try and get those matchups that they were hoping for from the start, but... Could still see yet more swapping coming out of Boom. And Tusk is actually just going to be heading over towards top right now. A little bit surprised that the Bounty Hunter hasn't tried to go and punch on against the Shadow Fiend a little bit. He's already, I mean, he's got two sentries. Um, he's he's going to pop one down now on the bottom side, but unfortunately does miss this Observer Ward. Blocking at his camp. Action up top as we get some damage being drained from the Monkey King. Tusk going to throw himself into the firing line just to try and salvage this. But looks like he's going to be brought down. Some nice little jukes around the fog. Can he juke his way back oh. into the trees? Oh. Yes, he can. The moves oh. from this Tusk are ridiculous. And now the Monkey King able to turn around a little bit. He's trying All to get glimpse. some finger stacks up. Nando getting glimpsed back. This level one glimpse doing so much work. Is he actually going to be brought down? That tower shot will be the thing to finish him off. Now they will be able to roll forward. They've got the Boundless Strike. Monkey King healing back up. That's two kills so far for Boom. Looks like Yaj is going to survive, but some fancy, fancy footwork from the Tusk. Yo, that was some sick individual plays. That and was then, of like... course, the Disruptor TP too. That was, that was necessary to pick up the double kill. Yep. Well played. All right, going to be going for a little... Stack, grab the bounty. Tusk does have his level 2 picked up now. Meanwhile, over at mid. Eh, SF slightly ahead of the Tinker, but you can already see the laser harassment starting to add up somewhat, so in your dream, gonna have to ferry out a little bit more. I'm not even gonna ferry out too much more regen. Just gonna grab his boots here. Let's have. He'll definitely need to pick up Salve, because uh, look at Tinker's yeah. build. He's going for laser rockets. I, I don't think Shadow Pink could sustain this. I, the one nice thing about grabbing, oh, I think he was hoping to grab the boots and then get an immediate kill with the level 2 ray instead of Tusk moving over on the side to try and find something, but no real opportunity and Raging Potato putting himself in a nice position in your dream if he gets forced back in between the... If he gets forced back towards base, might actually just get sniped by the bounty hunter. It is only, he is level 2 on the bounty right now. And in your dream, hoping to pick up his bottle, but still needs. Yeah, yeah, he's gotta, he's gotta just go for the, the regen items, right? In your dreams is dead, right? I think so. He's getting slowed uh, up. Car went for a creep. If you got the laser off, that should have been a kill. But Shadow Fiend is just getting completely dominated. And the Corey flies out, has South, has Clarity, but like, he's just bleeding gold at this point, right? Because that South is literally just like, one laser. And then, you know, or actually maybe two laser. But here comes the surprising coming in. gank. Yeah, Fat Rider gank coming in. No boots on this Tinker. He's going to get off the rockets. Is he going to be brought down? There's not enough raises. They can't bring in all three. And Bat Rider tanking way too much tower damage to stick. Now it's actually In Your Dream who's gone a little bit too far. They do get the cask off. Glimpse coming out. The Fairy Fire. I don't think that's going to be enough to save him. So he does just turn around to try and do as much damage as he possibly can before he goes down. Now Kez cute. Is going to be finished off. Carl grabbing that last hit. And that was a utterly disastrous gank on the mid lane. Yep. Shadow Fiend bot. Regen item. Still end up dying. And he's pointing back. And yeah, Carl is going to be dominating this lane. He's, he gets level 3 laser. And uh, should be able to easily walk back after a heal. And sorry. 
dumpstering this shadow team. Yeah, pretty su attack. I'm actually a little bit surprised to see that he gets the the third point in laser. They did change uh, what, I want to say the cooldown scaling relatively recently. Do you remember off the top of your head? Was that the... I seem to remember Tinker getting a little nerf. Uh, I don't remember I, exactly what it I was. I don't recall what, what it is, sorry. Uh, okay, that's that's fine. I'll have to just... I'll go check it a little bit later, but... Uh, it does seem to... If that is the case, then getting some more points in laser early on does make sense. It does hamper your build overall a little bit in terms of your farm speed. Once you pick up your BOTs, but it doesn't really matter if you're dominating the lane. Nando gonna get stacked up here by the Jingu. They got Raging Potato coming around the corner as well. Can he get the Boundless Strike off? He really needs the heal. Is it gonna be enough? Uh, dream of Cell. Nope. He had a dream. Now it's gone. Just getting right click down. Did not anticipate that the Bounty Hunter would be there. And then he got a little bit of extra damage helping out a lot in finishing off that kill. Okay, there, there, there's some not so great stuff happening to the the boom lanes at this point. They're still finding decent CS uh, across the board, but some unsuccessful rotations and all, what, all three of their cores going down at least once? Oh no, the Batriders managed to avoid death so far. Lumic getting chased down. I'm just gonna turn around, looking to looking try and bring down this Monkey King, in fact. Is there gonna be a battle strike coming out? He doesn't manage to dodge it. And Monkey King healing up a little bit more, but as Razor arrives on the scene, just gonna end up being a one for one. All right, so the, the Tinker changed his, his uh, cooldown on his laser. Yeah. It used to be always 14 seconds, but now it scales downwards at starting at 20, 18, 16, 14, so... And Honestly, it's not that big of a deal. Yeah. We want this Tusk. Gonna throw out the Ooh. shards, but does not matter in the slightest that three points in the laser and two points in the missile and Tinker is... Oh, the glimpse back, though. <laughs> I mean, it's inconvenient, but... It's gonna elicit a pause here quickly. That's actually one of the most satisfying things you can do as a disruptor. Just glimpsing a core. And <laughs> yeah. the TP in. Yeah, it's, it's pretty sweet. Alright, so Tinker's game is already looking relatively secure, right? He's got 1200 gold worth of progress towards his BOTs. That's uh, only 6 minutes in. It's looking really good. Shadow Fiend has managed to catch up a little bit while the Tinker was away. Got his souls up and, uh,. At least finding some farm. Looks like you did have kind of the right call on the overall build. Gonna be going for some treads, a drum. We'll see what he opts for after that. I think the SNY is very likely. And even more lane rotations happening as uh, the Batrider is gonna be TPing all the way down towards bottom. So just musical lanes all over the place from both teams trying to maintain these favorable matchups. Though I guess the Batrider just wants the experience down here. I think Pike is also a pretty strong consideration consideration this game because you're playing against uh, a static link from Razor. Yep. If he comes at you, you could pike him away. And pike is just a good item to have if you're trying to position against the chronosphere as well. So we might see some sort of drums pike. Of course that helps you siege the building. Yep. But Which we'll is see. something that you mentioned, right? It's not a not really a strength of their their lineup, especially with the Monkey King as yep. the position one. So have to see. Monkey King still trying to finish up the majority of his like little early game items so far, so we're not going to get a clear indication as to what his build is going to be. I feel like Boom are maybe on a bit of a timer this game, right? They probably have to take some tier 1s out to really get their Batrider online. He's going to be going for a drum as well, it looks like, but it, it seems to me if this game goes late, I think you favor... Execration. I, I kind of believe in the Tinker's ability to take over this game, even in the face of like scouting from the Batrider and the the Sigil and stuff like that. It's just kind of hard for the Monkey King and the Shadow Fiend to play once their BKBs start wearing down. I mean, even with the BKB, right? The fact that Chronosphere and Death Ward kind of ignores yeah. whether you're magically immune or not. Um, there's a lot of damage e even for that. You have Trackled uh, as the game goes long, so. I definitely agree with the sentiment. I don't definitely, I don't have like a good time, like, oh, you know, yeah. past the 40 minute mark, execution will take over. I think that that would really come down to, let's say, how farmed the Shadow Fiend is, how many seconds of BKB charge he has left. Uh, but eventually, I think execution's lineup does, does scale better. I, I'm, I'm trying to think about what Monkey King will go for item wise. 
Yeah. And I can't really like I don't think you go battle fairy this game because I, I do feel like that might be a little bit too farm heavy considering that, you know, Shadow Fiend is definitely gonna be taking the majority of the farm. But if you don't go battle fairy, I guess you're going for more of maybe even Shadow Blade kind of thing, or is that too Seems dicey. I'm not sure what you track. Yeah. Right. I'm I'm not sure what you go for. Yeah. It's 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 tough. I mean you can I guess what Echo Saber is not awful. S and Y is okay. There's just there's no one item that really stands like head and shoulders above everything, right? You sometimes see Deso, but Deso with no attack speed sounds uh, really underwhelming. So we'll have to see what happens. Uh, the one synergy that you I guess kind of touched on, but we didn't really mention too explicitly in this game is that they've got the Tinker plus Bounty Hunter. So uh, oh, once yeah. Tinker gets once he gets his Ags. There's just going to be rockets flying everywhere if you're tracked. You're just, uh... Yeah, I mean, look at... <laughs> even, even the Batrider is just like, alright, yo, Carl Tinker auto-win. Uh, but... It's, it's going to be very, very difficult for the Tusk and the Disruptor to play this game. Once it gets a little bit later on, there's just going to be non-stop heat-seeking missiles flying at you once you get tracked, and... You pretty much have no counterplay. I mean, you can buy all the Tranquil Boots and, like, Glimmer Capes that you want, is still just not going to be able to approach the fights in the way that you'd like. And Tinker can be a mile away, is the other thing. He doesn't have to put himself in Batrider range or Glimpse range or anything to just be spamming nonstop. Don't get tracked? Yeah, don't get tracked. <laughs> Buy some Lotus Orbs, hopefully. Yeah, I mean, that does expensive items. Okay, so Void, level 4 so far. Um, what do you think, Razor build-wise, this game? This hero is always a little bit interesting to me, because it feels like you have to balance the... You have to balance building survivability to actually be able to do anything with your team versus buying farming items so that you can actually keep up the pace, because your natural farm rate on this hero is not that high. You know, you, it's another one of those heroes, I guess, similar to CK, where you see people sometimes, like, strangely using their abilities just so that they can farm. You know, we, we see people use Eye of the Storm just to move through the jungle and secure that little bit of extra farm just so that they can get to an item that bit more quickly. And it's kind of the same with CK with Phantasm. It's a relatively long cooldown that you're committing just to speed up your farm rate just that tiny bit more because your hero doesn't really naturally farm all that fast. I think this game, because Tinker is likely gonna... Oh, we already mentioned why he's gonna be one of the the strongest hero in this game. Yeah. You let the Tinker carry, and, and Razor could build more like semi-carry. So maybe like face drums, pike, you know, just the really good stat efficient item that allows him to fight early on. And then you allow Tinker to take over the late game. That's yeah. my guess. Yeah, they're also going to need a hero that kind of goes in before... Oh, that was not a good oh, time to no. pop the illusion rune. Unless it drags it away, it actually does end up splitting it somewhat in your dream. Going to turn around for some damage, realizing that he is 100% dead. Raging Potato charging in there. And they had that they had that gank rolling since before the pause. Didn't really have too much of a chance, unfortunately for him. But uh, yeah, I agree with the idea of just kind of statting up on this Razor, especially because I think when you have Void on your team, you really want someone to scout for him and to kind of start the fight. Nando just getting uh, charged down here by the Batrider. He's going to use his time walk now, trying to evade, but uh, Bat's still putting down some decent damage, and this Flame Break is actually going to hurt. He does have some wand charges, so he'll be fine, but still, Void almost getting solo killed by the Bat. Not a great look for him. But it does survive where some other cores would have definitely died. So that is one of the nice things about the Void. And he's already picked up the time dilation, so it's not going to happen quite so easily next time around. Uh, once Oops. everything's on cooldown. Since the break, since that kill, uh, in your dreams decides to now switch it up. Gonna be for going for huh? Yules instead. Alright. Okay. 
I mean, defensively, Yules is actually a very good item this game, right? It get yeah. rid of the track, dodge stuns. You can dodge Chrono if you're pretty good with it, so. Definitely see the merit here. Monkey King coming in, they spotted out the Witch Doctor, he's gonna get Glimpse back, does manage to pop out the cast before he gets dragged all the way in, Lumic is gonna give those Jingu stacks over to the Monkey King, Boundless Strike still cooling down, nice shards, gonna block in the Razor as well, and that is going to be in your dream, hasting in, cleanup crew, picks up the double, gets his revenge, and gets straight up to Max Souls, definitely a nice little line of play there for Boom, and he's not even done! He's chasing after Carl. That first raise is going to end up connecting. Oh. There's the short raise. Oh. Back around. Oh, I can't get the long one. Oh, I, I think he panicked a little bit. I think he had a little bit more time to actually. Yeah, walk he had. A little bit further he had away. more time because the raise happened, and then Tinker still stood there TPing for like one more second. Yeah. Confirm, yeah, not Yafitz. No. Do people even know who Yafitz is? I hope so. I I literally watched the um. Uh, the... I'm trying to remember the name of the... Like, the highlight video. Perfect is Total. shit. Is it, it's the perfect is shit video, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, but I literally watched that the actually. other day. It is, it is really bad, yeah. but it's... Uh, <laughs> there you go, that's what we had back in the day. Nice paralyzing cast once again, Lumic on point, dodging the smoke gank. They are still gonna try and go for the Razor, and I don't know if he's gonna be able to escape. There's the glimpse, there's the lasso. There's everything that they need to find this kill. Uh, there's gonna be Raging Potato making his way in now, and actually, somehow picking up that kill on the, the Disruptor in the midst of all of that, uh, it's only one point Maledict, but just got kind of right-clicked to death, it looks like, by, by Lumic. There you go. Oh yeah, Wish Doctor, base damage, no joke. Okay, so Tinker's got his BOTs now, sub 10, looking pretty good, he's gonna set himself up another stack here, we'll check if he gets it. Oh, Come look on, at Carl, I believe in you. Punch him. Oh. Hey. Dragged out a TP here. There are three points up in the glimpse. He's getting dragged all the way back. He might have Ow. to use the Chrono to save himself. There you go. Gonna buy himself a few more seconds on that time walk. He's got oh. two stick charges. One more bash. He's gonna do it. He doesn't get it. Oh, Mando, what's your plan now? Oh, no. Bring around the rosy, is... and he is gone. Meanwhile, eh, Dream of Self waiting on the trees up here. He's gonna get tracked up, bound the strike to open up some space. Hop himself up. Still getting chased, does still have the primal spring, however, so. He's gonna be fine. Just the hopping all the way back towards his base. He is Man, queuing up the Battle Fury. Okay. I mean, that makes sense now that uh, Shadow Fiend is going magic, right? Then you definitely want a little bit more physical damage from somebody else. A good mixture of damage. Uh, Makes them hard to somewhat itemize against you. Uh, Raging Potato already level 6. The, the Tinker being online at this point is actually quite scary. Because he can just turn up anywhere. Oh, Yaj, maybe overextending somewhat. The last are coming in. And once again, will be Razor Tank in the gank. Not really finding that much farm progression. As he gets brought down and boom. Rotating a bunch of heroes up top here. Looking like they probably want to transition this into a tier 1 push. If at all possible. But uh, Shadow Fiend instead just gonna go and hit some of these stacks over in the jungle. Raging Potato gonna gladly steal some of this experience. Yeah, Razor is actually a, a big concern right now for Execration because, like you already mentioned, the hero doesn't farm very well. And honestly, he doesn't have places to farm because uh, the Tinker is gonna take most of it. Tinker is a farm vacuum, as yeah. some would put it. Yeah. I, I don't know what his catch-up plan is. Is it, a, is it a situation where you can get away with a catch-up, Midas? Or just not worth No. I think it might be too late for a catch-up, Midas. I mean, it's, I guess it's never too late, but <laughs> then he's really useless for the next 20-30 yeah. minutes. Bottom tower won't no, I've got some more scouting going up up here. Raging Potato does not want to give away his ward, so he's not going to throw any tracks. Keeping tabs on In Your Dream in the River. Yeah, relatively speedy, says hello, thinks about heading towards top, but does not follow through. Void just going pretty standard carry Void build so far. It seems like they're really keen to make a play happen with the track and the Tinker TPing in, but have not quite been able to find the right angle. They're kind of dangling Yaj's bait once again, but it's actually over on the mid lane where the Chronosphere comes out. In Your Dream going to let loose with the Requiem. Can they get off another set of homing missiles? 
Oh, ice shards. Oh, raging potato are gonna be just fine. I think they, they both Our ran forward to tank the missiles in case. Yep, he did. They won't did. be able to target the bat. Nice little bit of play. Nah, nah. Right. So no no track kills really just yet, but it feels like Execration is still pretty much in control. Witch Doctor gonna lay down some damage onto the disruptor here. He does have his ultimate available, getting nuked down. I think he's dead to this next tick, and the Monkey King actually stuck up on his perch there. Also in some trouble, one more lasso over on this poor Razor. Just cannot seem to catch a break as he gets dragged back into the tier one and finished off. Snowball forward, I think not destined to connect, but there is an Ice Shards. Though nobody came along with uh, Joe Cam, so... What do you know? Just gonna end up being Yaj dead once again. Alright, this Razor's game is actually done. Like, I, I don't know what he could do. Uh... He's not a hero where he could really take advantage of, let's say, a pretty good Chronosphere either, so... Mm. I guess his job in the fight is to just run at the Monkey King and link him. Push him out of his Wukong command, but... I'm not sure if he could do that. I, I feel like at this point he runs in and he's been trying to do just that and he just dies. Just doesn't have the... The item to play that frontline role. Yeah, I, I don't know what the what the solution is. It doesn't feel like there's, you know, he, he just needs a bunch of stats. There isn't a single item that's really gonna. gonna track solve kills. The problem. Is that the solution? Maybe track kills until you can buy uh, a on disc. Then you, <laughs> then you <laughs> track set. kills, track kills into Midas, or or more more gold. Yeah. I'm I'm down. All right, Batrider now has his drum. They're gonna be looking for another oh, kill. Oh, raging potato! Going oh, for he's tried for the career. Meanwhile, they're gonna find Nando and Lumic over here. Looks like the Witch Doctor is 100% dead. There is a Chronosphere available. Nando asking his teammates as to what their situation is, whether they can come TPing in. He does manage to jump away. The Jinger stacks are up. He's now gonna dra drag back into the Static Storm and kill in there by the Ice Shards. Beautifully played by Jerkin on poor Yash once again. Getting lassoed up, but it's actually the Batrider sticking himself on the cliff. 